So, Lord, we pray tonight. We pray over this, uh, this ministry that has representatives scattered in a lot of places. And it was our heart last time we're here, and you reminded me again. This place scatters seed across the world that produces fruit for Jesus. May that continue and enhance and enrich for the sake of the Jesus we serve. I pray it in your name. And tonight, just help us together to think about our obligation to a dying world and what we can do about it, bless your name. What we can do about it because your life has come to us. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. just say this out loud. Just say this out loud because it's what I want to talk to you about tonight. And uh, I, I left my Bible at Pastor Owens, so I, just, I have to trust the Lord. I hope some of you have that same thing happen, but not for the same reason. Uh, but it hasn't changed what I want to talk about. Say this out loud. I am a change agent. I'm a change agent. Once more. I'm a change agent. I want to read the same verse I read here a year ago, but go somewhere entirely different with it. It's from Matthew 13, 33, which says, And he gave them another parable, saying, the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, it's interchangeable, is like a woman who took yeast in our culture, or leaven in theirs. And in the Bible, there's seven or eight kinds of leaven. The leaven of the Pharisees, the leaven of the scribes, the leaven of the law, etc., etc., etc. Lots of kinds. But this is a different kind of leaven here because it's not negative and indicative of sin. This is something different. This is a proactive leaven. And this woman took some leaven and she added it to three measures of grain or flour until all of that flour was, let's use English, was yeasted. That's what the Bible says. She took something small, added it to a larger quantity of something else, and until the something else, the big quantity, was yeasted. A few months ago, I was in the country of Mali, and we have a project going on there, agricultural project. I, I, if I get going on missions, you'll forgive me for just running a little bit, will you? Well, I'm going to do it, but I'm, I'm democratic enough to let you in right now, but after it, no hope. And uh, how many say amen to Mali? You don't care? Let's go on. Where are <laughs> Mali, you know where Mali is? In Africa, right in the bottom of the Sahara Desert probably one of the poorest places I've ever been, and a missionary there contacted me and said, I'm looking at a couple of tribes here by the border of Cote d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast, and we cannot find anywhere in mission history one believer in Jesus among this tribe. And we think there's 17,000 people. We don't know. The government doesn't even know how many people are living out in the bush, and they're among the poorest of the poor, would you help us with that? I said, you know, I'm coming to your land anyway for a national conference, and afterward, let's go have a look. In Fahrenheit degrees, it was 131 degrees out there in a 40 mile an hour wind. That means you get barbecued if you stand up. That's how bad it was. We sat with ants as big as your fingernails climbing up our pants, and it's so hard to do business in a Western way because you can't speak directly to the chief guy because they would not treat you as serious. That's not a way sociologically there to do that. So you have to take an agent that speaks for you, and in, there's 12 elders and the chief guy, and we have five or six guys, but I have to speak to my agent out loud in front of all. He speaks it to the chief's agent, who repeats it verbatim to the chief. And then it comes back. Do you know how long it takes to get anything done? hours and hours in that heat and ants swatting and all the rest of it. So I had to get up, we're sitting in the sand, I had to get up, stretch my legs, walking around a little bit. And uh, I, I got between two huts and there were two young ladies there sitting in the ground and they had a bag of some kind of flour, I don't, I don't know what, some kind of meal. I don't know what it was, but it was gray. It wasn't white, it was gray. And they had a Coke can with the top off and a big old ugly beat up pan and they were taking two scoops of this gray stuff, flour-like stuff, dump it in the pan, and a scoop of sand. Two scoops of the gray stuff, scoop of sand. And I said to my translator, what in the world are they doing? Brother, they're making bread. 
They're making bread. The only place there's any nutrients here is in the dirt. So they will bake it. One third of the ingredients will be bread. And that's what they feed their children. Even little bitty children, belly swollen, orange hair, eye sunk, no protein. That's the problem. Uh, it's change now. Say amen in advance. You don't know what I'm going to say. I'm just saying it's change now. And so we flew a brother up from South Africa to help us. Uh, do agricultural examination, test the soil, all those things. And uh, <laughs> the guy's like a, a Dr. Strangelove, got a bandana around his head and the glasses stuck up. And finally, after five days, we're out there in the dirt in the rest. I've got it, Doc. I've got it. Well, what have you got? You don't know. It's not malaria. I've got it. No, I, I know what we can plant here. What we'll plant here? An Indonesian bean plant grows about 14 inches. It grows so fast, you have to put a stick by every, it'll fall over, it's too, so many beans. 97% protein every bean. If the people grow this and eat this, this problem will go away. Today, if there's any bellows protruding, a young lady is pregnant. That has completely disappeared. We have 41 acres of beans growing in that place. So let me tell you, as far as across the street from this little chapel, you can't grow a carrot as big as this finger. But on that 41 acres, Holy Ghost is brooding over the bean plants. Nothing else. It's like hands under that red dirt pushing those things. It's as green as Ireland. Even, I, where am I? New Zealand, yes. It's as green as New Zealand. What country am I in? <clears throat> Amazing. And it worked. So we said to them, <clears throat> we will not pay dimni. You know what dimni is? Dimni is a tax that a non-Muslim pays to a Muslim to be protected from that Muslim. It's paying for protection. I slammed the dirt. I said to the translator, you say what I'm saying exact in the way. I boom, will not pay one shilling of dimni. You know, righteous just take it by force. Come on. And, and even the mullahs, okay, okay, okay. I said, we're suddenly two families here. What they didn't know, they're born again, filled with the spirit and evangelists, but they know how to grow stuff. It's good to get some skill sets while you're here that does something other than teach and pray. That's the important piece. But learn how to do some other stuff. It'll, be, it'll help you a great deal, great, great deal. Simple medicine, simple building, simple electricity, all of that, all of that. And. Um, so we, we, we made a joint venture. We got the 41 acres prepared, paid them for that joint venture. They didn't have to work for free. And we moved those two Christian families out there because we said to them, we are sending you gifts from God. You're going to tax a gift from God? Oh, they got that. Oh, no, we can't do that. And furthermore, look after them well. Treat them as a gift from God. That's what's happened every day for the Christians out there. It's like Christmas. They run, do you have enough fruit in your hut? Do you have water? Did you sleep well? How is your wife? How are you? It's amazing what's happened. Because they are, in Muslim eyes, infidels. And infidels, well, you know what their future is if it runs this whole course. So here's how it happens. They plant the beans. The beans start growing. And the leaders, our Christians, go... And they stretch their hands out every morning, five days a week, and say, Oh, Jesus Christ, the giver of all living things, cause these beans to grow and not die, and be healthy and not weak and not wither away. Keep all the pestilence. We thank you that you're going to make these beans grow, and grow they do. Now, here's unbelieving eyes watching beans grow when somebody is praying in the name of <laughs> How many think he's able to do that? Amen. He's able to do I said he's able to do it. He's more than a song we sing about that. He's able to make beans grow. After some weeks, our folks said to one of the elders, okay, now you get your hands up here and pray. Oh, no, it's wonderful. You look what's happening here. You, you pray that Christian prayer. Said, no, no, no. This is not my bean patch. It's our bean patch. So you must be part of this. Put your hands up. Okay. So a Muslim guy starts this. Tell me the words. Oh, Jesus Christ, 
the giver of all living things. Make the beans grow. And they don't die, they keep growing. I don't know the timeline exactly. I, I, if I remember correctly, it was about a couple of weeks. It's morning time. Six o'clock this happens, or seven. Oh, Jesus. He starts shaking violently and runs off to his hut. He doesn't come back till the afternoon, sees the missionary. He said, I can't stop shaking, and I feel very dirty inside. And the missionary who speaks his dialect said, you are. That's why you feel that way. It's simple culture. You have to speak directly. Why can't I stop shaking? Because God is touching you. And he has now let you see what he sees inside of you. But he wants you to be one of his sons. And for the first time in any mission history you can find anywhere, that man confessed his sins and became a follower of Jesus. Fast forward to today. 21 or 22 men heads of clans are praying those prayers and are saved and are being discipled from 6 o'clock till 7 on that sand pile, praying over the bean heap. 21 acres they keep for themselves. They sell the rest because they want a school. We can do that together. So the Dear Assemblies of God had a program years ago called Tabernacles for Africa. Okay, so I have background with those folks and a really good relationship with the mission department. I called Springfield, Missouri. Do you have any of these? We have one on Dakar. That's the seaport that's closest. They gave it to us. It's big enough for six school classes. So we hauled it out there, got somebody to pour a nice slab, because the local guys you know, might not be straight. We got it straight, and then they put the whole thing together, six classes, and they paid just a little tiny bit, and all the teachers are Christians, saved and born again from Senegal, went there to teach in French. So the children's religious study is the Bible, not Quran. And let me give you something to pray about here, if you would. Uh, we believe, those of us working there, that the mullah is to be the pastor. Because this guy's not a loony bin. He's, he's a student of the Quran, but we got him a Hasnarian Arabic Bible, and he's telling the missionary, when I read my Quran, I get a migraine headache. That's his words, just a few weeks ago. When I read this book about Jesus Christ, I feel like there's fire in my belly. And the missionary said, well, read all the way through and I'll explain the whole story. He said, I'm trying, but sir, when I come to this person, Jesus Christ, I am stuck there. And the next day I have to go back and read again. What kind of a man is this? I cannot go on till you explain to me about him. How many think he's getting close? <laughs> he's getting close. So you pray with me that he gets saved, spirit filled, has a revelation of Jesus and becomes the pastor because in every other way, he bears an elder spirit. How many understand what I'm saying? He, he's a true father in the fathering sense. We think he's our pastor. Glory to God. You can't win those people to Jesus. Stop that. Yes, you can. He won't come back till everybody hears, so that means those folk too. So that's going on seven days a week. Six to seven, the missionary disciples, the men that are being saved, they're discipling their families, and from seven to eight, he spends an hour with the mullah, and that's how far he's got him in the last couple of years. How many think he's on the move? Yes. Something's happening. That's what the kingdom of God is like, because kingdom means the place, any place God's ruling, any place he's permitted to rule and, 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 and release uh, his programs and mindsets into someone's life, it's called the kingdom of God. It's not worldly lands. It's righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. And that's invested in our hearts. The kingdom is within. That's where God, he's trying to capture us. Not another mountaintop. He's trying to capture us. Get us under control. How many would agree our biggest battle for control is? It's the self, isn't it? It I'm there. I hit guilt on that account. So here's some things about that yeast work. That yeast work. Yeast has to be mixed with something. You've got to go to Molly to do what I've just said. Somebody has to go out there and help planting and do with them what they cannot do for themselves until they can do it for themselves. You've got to, uh, in other words, even this school, as well as the local churches roundabout, 
God has not assigned us here only to have wonderful worship like tonight, feel the presence of God, and open his book. That's the taking on strength piece, which is critically important. If there's nothing going in, there's not very much going to come back out. So that, that's how that cycle of training happens. We have something to, to produce. But our, the goal of this whole institution is outside the parameters of this campus. It's somewhere with somebody that needs to hear the name of Jesus. Would you agree with that? Somewhere, somebody's waiting tonight to hear that delivery name. Because there is not another in which a person can be redeemed except the name of Jesus. And we're here just like that old song. Because he thought we were with saving. He thought that. And it happened. And here we are. So it has to be mingled. If, you, if yeast is just left in the fridge, that's where it is. It just left in the fridge. But it has to be mingled with something. Which means, please don't complain about the school system in your country if you are not willing to join it. This point's a little weak, Lord. Crank it up. <laughs> okay. Don't be complaining about business that's corrupt unless you start a business and perform in a vastly different way. We're not born to isolate from the culture, but to join it as the Jesus alternative to all the muck and mess that goes on in the world. I'm really done just condemning the world. It's already condemned. And why should any of us be shocked that sinners behave like sinners? You know, my wife and I were invited by a certain part of the government in Brazil to go on vacation down there a few years ago. So we went. We went. And it's a charming place and wonderful food. Churrascarias, great big barbecues, wonderful. And lots of fruit and all of that. So we went, and the second night was a huge cocktail party. 200 members of the government and all of us which were five or six hundred total Americans are down there. I tell you, Americans like to drink. <laughs> and it was on. All the, the bar was open and free everything, and there's boys and girls walking around with trays of whatever. So my wife and I duly ordered up our beer. Oh, my God! No, no, it was ginger ale. This, <laughs> don't think so. And there we are in the midst of all of those people with our little sodas. And my wife said, I'd like to get out of here. I said, not yet. Why? Here's, here's what you have to get boots on. And, and don't be falsely modest. Greater is he that is in me than he that's running this cocktail party. And we belong here. Because the authority in the room is not with 900 drunk people, it's with a few who know Jesus. Absolutely right. And somewhere, you have to wake up to who you are and who Jesus is inside of you. What do you think the Bible means when it says, I send you out, Matthew 10, 16, I send you out in the midst of the Italian brotherhood so you can play kiss face and eat pizza. That's not what the Bible says. I send you out as lambs in the midst of... That sounds like a threatening, hostile environment. Does it not? You don't have to know Greek to understand that. Lambs think that it's scary to be there in front of lions because lions see them as buffets with legs running around on it. In the Old Testament, the Bible says it this way. The Lord prepares a table for us, not with our kissing cousins, but in the midst of our and And guess what? He sends us there. <laughs> God would never do anything to upset her up. Yes, he would. He'll get you ready and get you a one-way ticket right to the wilderness. Yes, he will send you in a danger zone. You know why? You are the hope of his world as well as this world. You believe that? You are. Angels aren't going to go doing a flip-flop in their wings through there. You are. That's the day or night we really did know, need to know in our heart of hearts. He's in me, therefore... Jesus and me are a minority in this messy place. And I'm here on assignment. It's just, like, it's just like the Jews in the wilderness. I thought for years 
They were backslidden, hard of heart, stiff neck, you know, all that stuff. And they were on seasons. How many know that's true? They were. Israel had doctorates in backsliding. They just knew how to do it. But it wasn't judgment that put them in the wilderness. You ever read Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2? Here's what God said. When I sent you, when I led you is the word, when I led you into the wilderness, I'm looking for some things. Are you humble? What's in your heart? And will you obey me quickly? How many, that's worth his investigation. And it took a while to get all that sorted, but at the end, only two qualified on those points. When I led you, that is not a judgment run. That's a training run. And most of Israel failed it. So we're standing there for all these people drinking, band playing, all the rest of it. And I said to my wife, no, we need to stay a few minutes, because when I was meditating this afternoon, I really felt the Holy Spirit just whisper to me, we were on assignment in this place. She said, Lord help us. You got it right, baby. Keep playing. We're on assignment. People everywhere, some half sloshed, some on the way. Drinks, just, oh, you could have whatever you wanted and all of it. That is the way of the world. We shouldn't be shocked. And in just a few minutes, through that crowd, came a little couple from New York that we had met at some event the day before. And the gentleman said to me, uh, you know, my wife and I are really uncomfortable here. And we were quite sure they were not Christians, and they weren't. We're just not, we don't like all this noise and drinking and stuff. It's not us. We're just like you and maybe another couple. Let's go next door to this little French place. It's quiet and we can eat. Okay. Well, we couldn't find anybody else, so we went next door. And uh, pretty soon this guy, he was a business guy from New York, asked me, and pretty soon he said, and what do you do? I said, man, when I tell you, uh, I'm going to have the elevator door closed so you don't run out of here. It's so amazing what I do. And I said, I'm a preacher. He said, well, I'm God. I said, now I'm going to run out of here. <laughs> a little short sawed off New Yorker, I'm God. He said, why do you say that? I said, do you think God looks like you? He said, oh, no, that doesn't fit. I said, that's what I'm saying, man. And I said, you, you, uh, you, you're God. Yeah, I think I'm God. I said, I've got a sore foot. Can you fix that up? Just, you know, slap a healing on me there. Well, now you know what I mean. And so we started backing out of that. Two hours later, they were weeping and receiving Jesus. And they were in the process of moving from New York to Orlando, Florida. Are you ready for this? Benny Hinn used to have a church in Orlando. Their house was one and a half blocks from that church. And went there the first time, and this lady was very sick, had a miracle in her body, and they're serving Jesus to this day. If we had not gone and yeasted that cocktail party, those people wouldn't be serving Jesus tonight. You can't win anybody by running. You have to run to the party, not away from it. So that's first. If you're going to be a change agent, you've got to join the party. There's got to be a mixing. There's got to be a mixing. And then yeast does its work in hiddenness. You don't see it. You don't see it. But you take it out of the fridge because yeast starts working when it gets warm. And it disappears when heat comes on it. But it's added to the flour. Can we use flour instead of meal? Is that all right? When it's added to the flour, chemical reactions start. And the enzymes and the yeast begin to interact chemically with the enzymes and the flour. And it creates gas. And so all of a sudden, this lump of what we call dough begins to grow. The ladies used to say it rises, raises. Rises, rises up, okay. And if you want thicker bread, you smack it down a little bit, and up it comes, and it's thicker. So when you cut it, you see all these little air bubbles. That happened because of the yeast. Otherwise, you have flat bread, okay. But that's what makes the dough rise. So dough is not flour, but it's not bread. It's the in-between. Listen, you right now are in between study and your destiny. And that's always a place of stretch. You're out of one thing, but you haven't quite yet landed in your place of fulfillment. It's a stretch. Some of you don't know where you're going to land. That's a good thing. Why? Because God's a God of wonder. He does signs and wonders. He does things to produce wondering in us before he produces answers in us. 
That was pretty good. Write that down. I hope, <laughs> hope I can remember that tomorrow. You know. How many understand? It's in hiddenness. You don't, if we went anywhere around this whole lovely country of yours, and tomorrow morning we found the bread with the highest grade ingredients, finest wheat, finest nuts, finest seeds, finest whatever, and it was baked, and we bought it home, and we, we, we got some butter from Happy Cows. Let me tell you what I saw in your land I've never seen anywhere. The other morning we were driving, I saw cows leaping and shouting and praising God. First thing in the, they're jumping and leaping. And I thought, those are happy cows. I'd like to have butter from my happy cow. He'd probably giggle all day long eating that stuff. So we get some butter from a happy cow. Look at your neighbor and say, he saw a happy cow. So, so you get some butter from a happy cow. And you get some jam from grandma, nothing like that, right? And you slather up a piece of this nice bread, and you take a big bite. Let me tell you what you will not say. My God, this is the finest yeast in a hundred nations. Let's eat all the rest of this yeast. The bread is what it is because the yeast has disappeared. Here's the principle. Yeast has to lose its identity to fulfill its destiny. And so might you. It doesn't make any difference our name is heard. Our name doesn't redeem anybody, drive out any demons, shrivel up any cancers. But when that name of Jesus comes across the threshold of a life, everything has to move up or down or in and out. Not some things, but everything, everything, everything. Hmm? I said everything has to move when the name of Jesus Amen. comes across. So the work's done in hiddenness. And there are many people working in parts of the world where there's strong feelings against Christ, there's no belief in his book or his message, and they have to work in houses. We, we have dozens of people that work in, in relationship with us who, who don't even have a building this size. They would be thrilled to have this much. They meet in a house in the room, in a bedroom. I was in a house church. And in the bedrooms, about, about three meters by three meters were over 36 adults. They couldn't set, they had to stand like this. But tears are running. They worship like this because they couldn't get their hands out full spread. Well, you know, if it, if it looks like a duck, quacks, swims, it's probably a church. And if they sing and pray and talk about Jesus and read the Bible, it's church just locked up in that little place. So you may have to... I know some missionaries that served in North Africa for 24 years. They came home with a roster of four converts. No mission board would send them with that batting average today. They'd say they're a failure. But in that country, I spoke to the head of the Evangelical Alliance of that country all afternoon a few months ago, overseas. There are so many people coming to Christ, that government is changing its religion laws, which defined only one belief system as the state religion, to now become inclusive of, of these new followers of Jesus Christ because their villages are clean, their crops grow, their children are in order, there's hardly any crime, and it wasn't some outsider that did it. Jesus came up in the midst of it, and they're recognizing the value of godly behavior. You gotta join the fray. You've got to sign up and join something and maybe link arms with a lot of brothers and sisters that have been out in places before us and, and, and lock, lock in with them in kind of an eldership over a region of like-minded people and fight the fight together with those who are there. It's done in hiddenness, lots of places, lots of places. It's amazing. The work of yeast is the willingness to be small to get something big produced. Don't despise the day of what kind of beginnings? Small beginnings. Don't despise that. Was that Ben Franklin or the Bible? Sounds like the Bible. So well, we bless Ben too, but it sounds like the Bible. I mean to be engaged the culture, not curse it. The one place the Bible says pray for the condition of the city. Pray that the city be blessed. Not, oh my God, it's full of crime. All true. 
But here's what faith is. Thank you, Lord, this city is changing. And he'll whisper to you, and I'm going to use you to help that happen. <laughs> you see. We're talking to the pastor down the road was there Sunday. And uh, it's wonderful in his church, I think, is there three chaplains already certified to work? The police department calls these spirit-filled people to go into houses for domestic disputes and other issues, and people are getting saved, and the police department's calling it. Well, goodness sake, that's easier than shooting somebody. Better that they get saved, that, that a Christian arrives on their doorstep, certified to do this work, and the police call his church members and send them out to handle these kinds of matters. You can say amen. I hope he sends you out in that same way. The goal of God's life through us is to change the environment we're in for the glory of Jesus. So once the yeast hits the flower, it becomes dough. Can't eat that. It's not, it's not healthy. Because it's raw material. But it's on the way someplace. If we get it all the way to the end, it's going to be good. Right now, it's got to be left alone so it can get bigger, you see. It's like Paul to the Romans. Don't be conformed, but be transformed, yes. metamorphosized. It, it, and the classic illustration is the worm hanging in the little cocoon sack over here. When it gets, and that's there because that's what it eats. It lives off that, but after some days it comes to a mid-range called a chrysalis. Now it's no longer the worm hanging and it's not yet a butterfly. It's in the middle. So it's critical that it still hangs there and doesn't become squirrel food or an obstruction for a lawnmower. You don't want big winds when you get halfway home. And all the way over here, it no longer hangs on a tree. Now it can fly. Whole different, the, the law of physics keeps it hanging stationary over here, allows us to eat in the middle and break out and fly. I've, oh, R. R. Kelly's blessing me. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it every night and day. Some of you folk know that song. Don't look at that man singing a rock song in this church. Yeah. I believe I can fly away. Your destiny and mine is to get all the way through that transition to where we can soar. Not get stuck here in something that's not as ordination. But talk about radical change from a worm that can crawl on its belly to something that can soar as, as far as a mile high. That's a whole different set of law of physics to, to permit that to happen and a different kind of body structure to allow that to happen. Dough is not much good remaining dough forever. I grew up in a house where we had bread baked fresh every Saturday. I love the smell of that. Do you? Freshly baked bread. Oh, smack your gums. It's good. Happy cows, happy jam. Mm, 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 mm. But what do we do with, with dough to get it finished? has to have heat, the right amount of heat. The yeast is gone, but now... We have something that can be eaten. Something in the broader scope that's useful. Is this helping anybody? Yes. It's very simple how this works. But it must work to fulfill this whole principle of yeast. Okay. Must be fired. There has to be. You know, anytime the Bible talks about it, it prophesies in the gospel. All the gospel is the same on this one. When Jesus comes, John's talking, he won't baptize you in water. John's doing that side of it. But he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and, and fire. Think about that piece. Was your baptism hot? If you had to ask somebody, you didn't get what you needed. Was that it? Well, I don't know. You might have had a tongue spasm. Then that was not, quote, unquote, it. If the almighty Holy Ghost touches you, you don't need somebody teaching you languages, beating you on the back, and grabbing your Adam's or Eve's apple. You need a holy God, needs our help to, to press people into phrases and stuff. Buy a Honda, buy a Honda. I don't like Hondas. I like Lexus. Change your tune here, okay? So, no, if a holy God touches us, there is no mistaking what happens. Hey, this is it. In our home church in Houston, we have a lot of 
students come up from the University of Houston because the, the metro runs right past our place. So they come 15, 20, sometimes 30, depends on their study schedule. And uh, we've got a few from West Africa. One's a little Bethany. She's, I, I'm, I'm sure she might be 35 or 40 kilos at the most, about this big. Uh, next Saturday, she'll have her doctorate degree in oil exploration and fracking and community development. She's a sharp girl. So a few weeks ago, we were trying to encourage people to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> I'm happy to tell you we're not embarrassed about that in church. I'm embarrassed when it doesn't happen. That's the point of embarrassment. And so a whole wad full of people touched by God, but not her. She's standing, Jesus, Jesus. It's like she's birthing something. Jesus. So finally she came over to me. Now she's from Africa, and I'm an older guy. So for her, I'm a bishop. So I'm not trying to add titles, but... Bishop, Bishop Dale, listen, I want you to pray for me that I'll, I'll, I'll receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speak in tongues. I said, well, firstly, your name is Bethany. Bethany, don't get stuck on the tongues issue. Don't make that the issue. Focus on Jesus, who gives this gift, and on receiving power. You don't have to ask him for tongues. What do you mean? Look, my family raised apples at one season in my life. I never saw my dad go out in the orchards. In the name of Jesus, grow apples on these trees. You didn't have to do that because apple trees grow. There's no tangerines in our forest. Apples are coming up. And my dear, when the Holy Spirit touches you, you'll speak. So don't get stuck there. Plus, she's an engineer. Now, if there's any engineers here, don't get off on me. I, you just have mental problems trying to get the baptism. <laughs> Because, look, I got a house full of lawyers. A, B, and you get C. When you get the Holy Ghost, that all goes to the wind. You just get something from heaven. I had one engineer tell me one night, we had some Q&A, we wanted to get a bunch of people filled. He says, now, uh, uh, how many cubic feet of air do you propose passes in and out of my lung system when the charismata falls upon me? I almost wanted to say, would you stand up and bend over so I can speak to your brain? <laughs> because you are seriously parked on that thing. How much air is... I said, don't repeat that question. I don't have a clue. Do you want to receive power from him? And he said, yes. I said, receive and boom, God just hit him. That's what he deserved. I secretly asked the Holy Ghost, I was praying in tongues, to slap him, but God wouldn't hear that. He just, he just, I think he touched him on his big head. That guy spoke in tongues for two straight days. How many know, he didn't have to come to me and say, did I get it? No, no, no. You. So I said to Bethany, I'm standing there, and I'm praying for discernment, because she's, she's honest. She's a seeker. She's honest. But it's that engineering thing. Okay, got to prove it. I said, Bethany, I, I don't feel to pray for you that you speak in tongues here. What I feel to pray for you is that you have a revelation of the power of Jesus. And when that comes, you'll grab what you see. She said, that's how I'm built. If I can see it, I can go there. I said, okay. So I said, let's pray. So we prayed together. She said, oh, I just feel so good about that. So I prayed for revelation of Jesus and his power. That's it. You pray for that. So it came to me while we're standing there. What I didn't know was six or eight of our college folks, the girls, had planned a prayer meeting in their dormitory at 5.30. Well, it went on to 1.30 a.m. Bethany was the first one knocked out by the Spirit of God. So the next Sunday morning, she come down the aisle like this in our church. I knew. And she said, oh, Bishop. I said, oh, do you have it? And she fell out trying to get in the seat. <laughs> You just take it for whatever it's worth. Okay. The goal of yeast is to change the thing it touches. Not to increase its flavor, to change its character. Say it again, I'm a change agent. I hope God will get that down in your spirit. Say it to one another tomorrow. Ask somebody, are you a change agent? Yes, you are. That just goes, one of the names is son or daughter of God. Oh, here's a, here's a nickname. Sister Yeast, Brother Levin, 
Right, that's right. Because that's who we are. Let me give you just a couple of illustrations. We've worked in Moldova since March of 1991. How many know where it is? A little country between Romania and Ukraine. Three and a half million people. Languages, Russian, Ukrainian, and Moldovan, which is the same virtually as Romanian. It's a Latin-based language. It's a derivative of Italian. That's who's there. When we began to work there, <clears throat> all the churches were underground. There was no signs. There were, all, there were only 10 full gospel churches in the country, always on the edge of town or some place down the hill and all of that because of communism. But the brothers began to believe and God began to work. I was at their national conference in February. Remember I told you how many churches? 10. 10. They've passed 435 churches with buildings in that many different towns. Please say amen because God, God did it. It's amazing what's happened. Oh, but more than churches, here's what's happened. In one town, uh, and the church is about 350 persons, adults. It's a farm town of 7,000 people. A lady across the street from the church, an Orthodox lady, called the church in the winter a few years ago. Came to see the pastor. She said, my neighbor, just up the next house up, and everybody out there is on about a half hectare or hectare like that. So that's kind of the community across from the church. My neighbor, I've seen no smoke from her chimney in three days. I'm afraid she's dead. We were born as girls, raised here, lived our life here, and our husband died here, and we don't have anybody, but there's no smoke. I'm afraid she's dead, Pastor. Would you go with me? And I have a key for that house. They went in. The lady was not dead, but near dead, under a foot of blankets, and rats were feeding on her face. It's not a second-hand story. I was there. Pastor came back, got some brothers to get her out of there, brought her over to the church, had built a new building and closed it in so they could finish the inside in winter. So it was, there was a building there, but it wasn't finished, just big cement floors and stuff. They fixed up a place for her to rest, a mat to sleep on, started feeding her some soup, got some ladies to stay with her all night. Today, that church completely cares out of its own resources, with what, without one dime of state money, to 50 old people most of whom are Orthodox, and 99% of whom find Jesus before they pass into eternity. It's so influential in the country, last September 1st weekend, the president came, of the country came for a visit to that little Pentecostal church in that little town. Said to the pastor, whose name is Victor, is it true what I've heard you're doing over there? Yes, sir, it's true. And we want to expand. Plus, they have a school. Plus, they bake 400 loaves of bread every day. And all the kids that come to their school, not one live in a house that has a toilet in it. Has to be hidden sometimes. Not going to sing praises working in a village like that of the world. Mr. President said, what time do I need to be there? 10 o'clock on Sunday. He showed up at 9 o'clock on Sunday and stayed till 4 o'clock in the afternoon in a Pentecostal church. So at service time, they put his big backside in a big soft chair right on the platform. So he got all the shundala and ha, 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 and he couldn't get away from it because he's in front of everybody. When it's his time to give, I mean, he's the president, so he can say some things. He could not get a speech out. He was weeping and sobbing. When to the next building, had his lunch. The, pro the communist president of that country ate his lunch and spent the afternoon with the old folks. There's a God in heaven who even loves communists and everybody else in town. I, I hope this raises your faith. Don't think about starting a little mission with four palm fronds and four poles. Think about affecting a city. Think about touching a nation. Here's what Matthew said in one place. Let your light so shine before men. Now listen to the rest of it. So they may see your good works. So there's something illuminating towards Jesus about the work of our hands and spirit. Think of it that way. It's not just empty labor to bind up the wounded. It's evidence of salvation in our lives. 
Let your light so shine and your good works. When they see that, they're going to glorify God. That's what's happened. An atheist president. So that's the first week into September. The president's there. Right across the street on the other side is a school that the, that the government closed a couple years ago saying they have no money. It was a school for 25 years for children with learning problems. They were not immobile, but they had learning issues. The government said, we have any money. Well, they had it, but not in the right country or in the hands of the right people. Twice the Pentecostal Union was denied buying that property at, at reasonable prices. The president comes. He sees all of this, sees all the children. They come in with lice and dirty clothes, beautiful Western-style showers. They're all fixed up. They get brand new clothes from the skin out. I know they have new shoes, too, because I sent them. One Jewish guy where I live gave me 8,800 pairs of brand new sneakers. So these kids don't have castaways. They've got the best money can buy. Somebody say praise God. Praise Listen, God. if you don't have resources, you can't do anything. And if you have resources, you can do something. It's not to heap on yourselves, either. It's to... The only thing I've ever taken out of our warehouse, so you know my confession, is... Uh, some cosmetic company was doing a big promotion, so we got perfumes and shampoos, pallets of it, and two pallets, you need to write this down because it'll be unbelievable, two pallets of chocolate-covered diet bars. Diet bars, covered with chocolate. I thought, that is heaven shining on us. The assumption is if you eat this, you'll get skinny, but the forklift had punched a box, Andrew, and some had tumbled out. So I picked up half a dozen of those. I ate them. I immediately gained a kilo and a half. So <laughs> we sent them to Siberia to skinny people. One month later, Dale is in Moldova in the same place for a different reason. And we're walking around. The bishop over the country, the pastor and I, are walking around that school place. Prayer walking, asking God to release the praise. The bishop's phone rang, and there's a message from the president. It said, in part, when I lay on my bed at night, I cannot close my eyes. I see the faces of those children and those old people and the love that your church has for them. I go to sleep thanking God for what you're doing. We cannot do what you're doing. I thank God for what you're doing. And I know and you know you've been denied twice. The place is called Karam Center. You've been denied purchase of the Karam Center twice, and this is the third denial. You cannot buy that place. Because since I was with you, no, a month has gone by. Since I was with you, what we call legislators, is that what you call folks here? That you govern, what we call legislators, in that country they call counselors. He said, and there, he has 16, he said, I've spoken to every one of them individually at lunch or coffee and so on in this month, and we are unanimous about this. You cannot buy the Karam Center. We are giving it to you with no tax in perpetuity and no transfer fee, and the papers will be on your desk in 40 days. Now, somebody ought to be praising God about now. A communist government... You ought to ask the Antichrist to pay for your wedding. Glory to God. I don't know if I meant that, but you understand what I'm saying. I love spending Egyptian money. Think about that. They own it. By the time I was back there, all the papers are sealed. The Pentecostal unit. And by the way, there are apartments on that property for 140 people its own sewage system, its own water system, full gymnasium, full theater, full commercial kitchen on about almost four acres of land and 14 buildings. Is there any faith in here tonight? I'll tell you one more and I have to, can I take four? Thank you. <laughs> I love talking about what God's, same country, same country. There's one, this will be short, there's one Christian high school in Moldova, operated by these same people, 265 students. Half of them are orphans. Orphans. Sponsored by people from the West, largely. It's a beautiful building, 
It's perfect. It's been there nine years. There's not one centimeter of graffiti on that building. It's as new nine years later, used all year. So the state has a qualifying exam that every high schooler has to take, same one. Everybody, private or public, have to take it. The state high school graduation rate across the whole nation is 31%. So 30 out of 100, 31 out of 100 in the state schools are successful in that exam. And admission to university at, from the state schools is, is just about the same. But at the Christian high school, <laughs> I'm going to shout for myself. At the Christian high school, on the same examination, given by the same proctors and mentors. The graduation rate is 100%, and the college admission rate is 100%. Please say amen for the Lord. So the Secretary of Education goes to see, what are you doing here? Sir, we don't start with educational theory, we start with a person. And his ideas about life, and here's what he said, I've come around to give you life, abundant, big life. Not some narrow down, shrunk up thing, but a big life, and that's what we teach you. Now you listen to me. Yeast tells me I am, by my born again nature, an agent of change. Yes. Have we got that? Yes. Yes. Very good. Let me tell you how they're changing the nation. Every public school administrator in the country by law in their contract, must come to the convention space at the Pentecostal Union in Kishino twice a year for three and a half days to be taught by Holy Ghost filled men and women how to grow successful schools and successful students. How many know you become like the thing you eat and now they're hearing about righteousness? I'm telling you, you can change the place you're in. And let me finish with this. I go out to the edge of the Capitol with the, with the bishop. We're looking at a farm. He pulls in there, he begins to weep. He said, Dale, we've been doing research for five years about our legacy. Because legacy is not about history, it's about future. What shall we become with the assets that are in our hand? Not where have we been, but what are we going to become? He said, five years of research. He said, I know what's going to happen here. We know what to do. I said, well, you're going to farm? Because they do. We've helped them get land during the years and so on. No, no, we're going to farm some of this till we make use of it. But on this land, we are going to build a Christian university only for teachers. Because we've done all the research, all the numbers from the government, and here's what we know. Somewhere from right now, 20 years to year 22, maybe 25 if there's some troubles in the world. The teachers from this unit, and they're already functioning in other buildings around town, right? They didn't wait. They've all, they're doing it now. He said, what we know is this. Year 20 to 20, to year 22 from right now, we will have provided 83% of every instructor in every school in the whole country. And we will have enough influence to control the curriculum, the moral training, and three years later, we will elect the people that will rule this nation. That's people that earn $2 a day saying, we're taking this country over. And in this country, the way you do it is take over the school system. And say, oh my God, you can't. Holy God, M M Mary, the mother of God, what shall we do? What shall we do is rise up and join the fray. If you think the school system is sick and there it is, join it and take it over and change it in the name of Jesus. All right, let's stand.